you know, do you, do you ever find that like if you if you were to like break down your work by like what is this really about? No, I'm not maybe not themes, but just kind of the 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 initial idea. Do you, do you, do you find that you you may or may not be writing about kind of the same thing? Because like one of the things that I'm realizing as we're talking about this is all of the work that I've just was able to write quickly and have it be almost there um, was almost always about a lack of communication in some way or another. So like the one that I read aloud for the first time started because I found out a guy that I grew up with committed suicide, but I found out through a Google alert pertaining to my hometown, not because anybody reached out to me and told me. Um, And then also I, a lot of the pieces are about the lack of communication between people who disagree or um, the lack of communication as a result of social media. I I can, I think that social media has destroyed our ability to communicate. Um, And so, I mean, this is just something I'm thinking about now for the first time hearing you talk is, Oh, I have kind of a theme. Do you, do you feel like you have a theme? No. And, no. And I, I answered that quickly, didn't I? And, and, and you know, it, it sometimes bothers me because it's hard to put a book manuscript together. When I was in graduate school, I was uh, one of the people I studied with uh, was Julie Sheehan, who's a very fine poet in her own right. And... Uh, we were having a lot of fun putting my book together. That, that was my uh, thesis, uh, was a book manuscript. I had plenty of work, but it was how to make a cohesive whole out of this. I will say that I have written a lot of poems about my family. Now, I don't set out to do that every time I write, but over the years, I have done that. Uh, and in my, my first book, it was a chapbook. It was called Dismantling the Playground. There were uh, poems about my family. My, uh, it was a coming of age and reconciling with maturing, if you could call it overall theme. And I, I gathered the poems together to kind of fit into that. But when I was working with Julie, we were trying to figure out, uh, I was trying to figure out the best way to order the poems and, and how to break them up. And I had used, or I thought about models that I had seen, and you still see this, you know, the uh, collection of a poet with section one, section two, section three, section four. Sometimes these sections uh, are made up of poems from different books or a different stage of their life or thematically connected I was trying to do that. The, the, the poems, you know, the section one was family. Section two was, uh, I don't know, uh, social, socio-political observations or whatever. And Julie tried to talk me out of it. She said, no, no, don't do that. Because unless, unless there's really uh, a, a, an obvious or tangible connection, they don't hold together well with the, the Roman numeral one, two, three, four. Fine, I wasn't married to it. So we left it out, but I, I, because I get books all the time for review and just you know, for my own reading pleasure or sharing them with colleagues and, and poet friends, I'm always envious that someone could actually put a book together where all the poems are not identical. They have their own personalities and you know, they go off on their, their own detours, but they're all connected thematically somehow. They fall together well. I just don't do that. I probably could put a concerted effort into trying to do it. It would make putting a book together easier. Uh, and I run into that problem. But uh, I don't know if there's an, an overriding theme. You know, me in the world. I mean, I don't know that that's a, that's a theme per se. But um, what strikes me at the moment I, I almost put, I when I was putting together, uh, I, I have a manuscript now that I'm trying to do this with. And that's, that's exactly one of my dilemmas. Um, I went through different titles for the book. And it was going to be named uh, after one of the poems I had hoped to include called Cultivated Happenstance. And I thought, oh, maybe I could get away with this. 
you know, cultivated happenstance, you know, put all these poems from different themes in here. You know, you can't, you know, you can't hold me to anything because it's cultivated happenstance. I don't know. I go back and forth with that. <laughs> and time will tell whether I actually do that. Uh, I will say this, though. I, I have a manuscript. It was on the cusp of being published uh, when COVID hit. So that kind of sunk that idea for a while. And that's okay. I was plenty busy. But uh, the title was the grab the, is the, the gravity of desire, and there's also a poem, the gravity of desire. And Julie had told me this. Julie Sheehan, when I was in grad school, other people tell me this about my work when they've read it online in a book. They've come to see me read. Or they're familiar with my work. The word gravity pops up a lot in my poetry. I was almost starting to get self-conscious about it. Like when I would, it would flow out of me. I wouldn't think about deliberately putting it in there. It, it wasn't a strategy. It's just, uh, so maybe there is something going on where I think about things being tethered to each other or that tethering being disrupted. I, I don't know. You know, I have to theorize about myself, which I always hate to do. I, I leave that to people to, you know, they like my work or tear it apart. Or, you know, you theorize. I don't care. Uh, but I have noticed that, that the word gravity is there. And I thought, well, the gravity of desire had quite a few poems that had gravity in it. And I thought, well, maybe I can get away with that. Uh, you know, maybe it doesn't matter because if it's uh, particular to the poem and it's relevant to the poem, it can stay. But there's no common element that I am continually aware of or uh, deliberately trying to achieve in a gathering of my poems or when I sit down to write. Uh, each, each event, uh, each poem seems to have its own gravity as far as what inspires me to write at that, at that moment. So I can't tell you I write love poems, I like, you know, uh, on the back of my chapbook, my my first book, uh, I had it was really nice. I had uh, comments by Diane Wachowski and Molly Peacock and David Shevin, so three fine poets, and uh, they focused on the aspect of my writing about people. Uh, Wachowski compared some of it, to really flattering. Uh, you know, to comparing some of them to Edward Arlington Robinson, you know, just uh, my my observations about individuals, and maybe early on I did that uh, predominantly, but I'm not I'm not really aware of deliberately doing it or incidentally doing it now. Uh, they seem to be isolated events, uh, and maybe there's something in there that I'm just not paying attention to. I don't know. I'd have to sit down and take a look. But that's sort of a, a, a linguistic imprint, the vocabulary I tend to use, because I think we all have one. Uh, and parts of my voice that appear uh, and create a thread. Um, I'm, I'm not aware uh, that I do it, and I don't really don't think about it. But it would be nice, because like I said, it would make a more cohesive collection. Uh, but I don't think I've reached that point yet. <laughs> 